Well, good morning again. We bring greetings from the Hampton Church of Christ and hope that everyone is doing well and everyone is surviving these weeks in solitude as, we, as it were, at least more solitude than what we have ever been. And so it is that we, on this Lord's Day, continue to turn toward God, continue to worship Him, continue to lift Him up, continue to thank Him, and continue to praise Him. I appreciate you uh, listening to this uh, broadcast and it is that we have you in mind also. We here at, the, at Hampton are, are mindful of those who are shut in, of those who are sick, and, and our prayers are being offered for you. If there's any way that we can help, please give us a call. You know that. Uh, talk to one of the elders. Or call, call me or call Daniel or call the church office and that we would be glad to do whatever it is that we can do to, to help during this time. We're here to help each other through this time. But this morning, I want to turn our thoughts to Psalm 61. If you would, get your Bibles, open it up to Psalm 61, and let's read it together there. In Psalm 61, it says this, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, art God, hast heard my vows. You've given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praise unto thy name forever, and I will daily perform my vows. I think there are several things that we can learn from this psalm, and particularly we're going to break them down into five particular categories. That it starts out, when my heart is overwhelmed. I thought this was a good verse to use during this time of when we may feel overwhelmed. We don't know as far as what tomorrow may hold or the next week or the next month. It may be that we're overwhelmed with, wow, why are people acting this way? Why is it that we have this uh, situation on our hands here in the United States and worldwide? You know, we've had viruses before, we've had sickness before, but we've never acted like this before. We don't know what the grocery stores are going to do. We don't know what, what we're going to do. But the Lord is in control. And God does give us some advice, particularly in Psalm 61. Read this again. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Number one, whenever we feel overwhelmed in life, continue to pray. Hear my cry. O oh God, attend unto my prayer, it says. Isn't it wonderful that God has given us the great blessing, the great privilege of prayer? Isn't it wonderful that at any time, anywhere, we can bow down our head and God bows down his ear to hear us and we know that he hears us? He said, hear my cry, O oh God, attend unto my prayer. And as David prayed, we can pray also. Isn't it wonderful? What a great blessing it is to know that during these times of, of, of turmoil that, that we can go to God in prayer and he hears our prayers. Keep praying. What is it that strengthens us? What is it that, that continues us? What, what is that, that that we thrive upon? But prayer. Continue to pray. I think of Daniel in the Old Testament. When it was that the king had said, don't pray, or don't pray to anyone but him, Daniel opened up his windows and boldly prayed to God. I think of Paul and Silas as they were there in prison. As they were singing up songs and all the prisoners heard them. Wow. God heard also, and God set them free. 
I think of Saul on the road to Damascus when he was struck blind. He went on into the city and he spent three days in prayer and fasting. I don't know what was on his mind except if it was me, certainly, Lord, just tell me what to do. Whatever it is, that's what I'll do. And Ananias came to Saul, said, Saul, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Don't you know that Saul was immediately ready to do this and had his sins washed away? Prayer, the power of prayer. Attend to my prayer, it says. Listen to my prayer. Hear my prayer, O God. Do we realize who we were praying to, the, the creator of all this universe, the one who loves us, who sustains us, the one who keeps us, provides for us? Yes, he does. God cares and God hears. Hear my cry, O God, and tend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Keep praying. And then I would say in this, it says not only keep praying, but keep trusting. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Realize, yes, there are things that we can do. And yes, there are things that we are supposed to do. Yes, there are things that as we try to, to curtail this, this virus as, as much as possible, there are things that we do and, and we isolate ourselves and we try to minimize the contact we have with, with others. There are things that we could do and can do and should do. But realize there is one that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Yes, we live our lives as if it all depends upon us. And then we pray as if it all depends on God, and it does. There is a rock that is higher than I. There is one who created us, and he is higher than us. But he cares for us. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In the book of Genesis, we read that Abraham, who trusted in God, when God said, Abraham, get up, go to a country that I will tell you. Can you imagine as he went back to Sarah and he said, Sarah, listen, God spoke to me and God said we are to move from here to another place. Pack up everything that we have. We're leaving. I don't know what Sarah said. It doesn't say what Sarah said. But if Sarah was, what my, was my wife, my wife would say, well, well uh, now, how long are we going to be gone? Or where are we going? What do I take? What do I leave? Well, that'd be natural questions to ask, wouldn't it? I don't know if Sarah asked these questions, but certainly if she did, well, Abraham, where are we going? And he'd say, I don't know where we're going. Well, how long are we going to stay? I don't know how long we're going to stay. But God said go and we're going. That's trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Isn't it wonderful that we like Abraham can have that same God if we have that same faith, to trust, keep trusting. Trust in the one who is higher than us. You have been a shelter for me, verse 3 says, and a strong tower from the enemy. Hasn't God watched over us in the past? Oh, yes, he has. Hasn't God been our shelter in the past? Oh, most assuredly. And we have that great assurance to know that as he has been our shelter, as he has been our hiding place, as he has been to the place that we can go whenever we're, we feel overwhelmed, that we can once again go to him, go to him in prayer, go to him in trust, to the rock that is higher than I, 
And he will be our shelter. He will be our safety. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Isn't that what the psalmist said? He is our refuge, that hiding place, that shelter in the time of storm. And certainly we're facing a storm right now. We don't know how long it's going to last. We're facing a physical storm with illness. We're facing an economic storm with, with what's happening in our world today. We're, we're, help, we're facing a, a storm with families. A storm. Yes, families have been together, uh, have spent time together like no other time. Uh, with our families together, certainly we can face a time of storm together. For thou hast been a shelter for me in a strong tower from the enemy. And so we continue to pray to God. We continue to trust in the rock that is higher than I. And then number three, it says to seek comfort. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For, O oh God... You have heard my vows, and you have given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. What is that heritage that he's talking about? It may be when you think about the heritage of your parents and grandparents and such that, that your faith comes from. It's been passed down from generation to generation. Isn't that wonderful to have such a faith as that, such a heritage as that? Or it may be that you don't quite have that heritage, but you can start that heritage and begin with your children and grandchildren, that they may look upon you as that heritage of those that they gain comfort in and trust in. When we trust in the Lord with all our heart and, and lean not into our own understanding, when we show others, yes, we trust in God. God will see us through and we affirm this and, and say it to others and proclaim it boldly and confidently. I trust in the Lord. I don't care what's going on in the world today and whatever it is, I trust in the Lord. Whatever happens to the stock market, up or down, I trust in the Lord. Whatever is there available on the, the shelves of, of the supermarket, I trust in the Lord. And he will see us through. But we gain comfort from others also. That heritage that he talks about. Family. Family is so important during this time. Family, let's, let's use this time for our bond of love to grow, for our bond of faith to increase, for that great bond of hope, may it continue. And may love overshadow all these. Seek comfort from others. Whenever we read in scriptures that when a time when we feel overwhelmed that we can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God, even the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. What a great heritage we have to know that others have turned to God for comfort during this time. And we too can feel assured we have comfort and we have a peace a peace that the world cannot understand. But we have it. Because he is the God of peace. The God of all comfort. Let's be in control during this time because God is in control. Let's be people of comfort and peace. Not of turmoil. And so as we pray and as we keep trusting and as we seek comfort. Let's remember to be thankful also. Be thankful for these things as we read and look in verse 6. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praise unto thy name. Isn't that thanksgiving? 
We don't have to preach doom and gloom during this time. We can sing praise unto God. Lift him up in song. Lift him up in prayer. Lift him up in, in the deeds that we would do day by day. Let others know that whatever we do, whatever we say, we want to, to lift God up, magnify his name, to bring him glory, honor, and praise. Whatever we do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Lord. Colossians 3, verse 17. Isn't it wonderful? Lift him up. Praise his name. I will sing praise unto the Lord. We have a choice. We have a choice today, uh, as in this situation, that we can we look inward. We can look inward. We can mourn, be pitiful, can complain, and be miserable. Or we can look outward. And we can look outward toward using this time to building a bond with our family. We can look outward and, and using this time to, to spend time in knowing our neighbors and helping our neighbors, literally the people next door, or as Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? And the one in need is our neighbor. We can use this time to look outward and upward and grow closer to God. Spend time in his word. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in private meditation upon what God has done for us and how he has blessed us bountifully during this time. I will sing praise into thy name. Remember, lift God up during this time. Be thankful. And so he says, and so I will sing praise into thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. What is it that you have vowed before God? Maybe you've said, well, I never made a vow before God. I, I, I don't do those things, but just think about it. When you became a Christian, you made a covenant with God that he will be your God. And you shall be his sheep, his people, his church. That you would trust in him and his ways. That you would not turn aside from these, either to the right or to the left. That you would promise to be faithful all the days of your life. These are the things I'm talking about. When he says that I may daily perform my vows, I think of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 where it says, We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus and to good work. It's like, as was explained in the Old Testament, that God is the potter and we are the clay. And he makes that, this clay into his workmanship. And that's who we are. We are his workmanship created unto good works. What is it that we should be doing? Look around and see what can we do to help others during this time. Go outward, not inward. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, that we are to let our light shine. that people would see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Glorify God in good times and bad, when we feel like it and when we don't. We need to do what we can with what we have, where we are, and bring God the glory. Thank you for this time.